HT, a black Suzuki, the lights are flickering and the alarm is going off. That's us, honey. <laughs> Car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to share the platform this morning with our speaker. Our speaker is, highly is a highly respected community leader and is a justice of the peace for the parish of Kingston and is regarded by people of all ages in his community as a role model, an outstanding voice of wisdom and love, and last but not least, a peacemaker. Please help me welcome to the microphone our Temple of, My, Temple of Light member, Mr. George Young, <laughs> Junior. Thank you very much, Lauren, for your warm introduction. I was about to look at the back there for the guest speaker, you know, when he echoed those very cordial sentiments. I would like to welcome those joining us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. Good morning, family, Good morning. and happy Father's Day. It may seem strange for me to be here talking about father and fatherhood when I am not a biological father. But if we should utilize Dr. Gucci, no, sorry, Dr. Enlela Gucci's definition, he's a professor at the University of South Africa, where he's head of the psychological psych psychological department. Sorry about that. In his 2004 work, Being a Man in South Africa, he defined a father as the process by means of which men come to an understanding of who they are, their sense of identity in a society. Wow. Again? <laughs> All right, so he's saying that one does not become a father simple because one has sired children. Father is much more than that. But that father and fatherhood is characterized by the discovery of one's inner essences. So it comes from within. It is the identification of spirit within and being in total unison with same. This is in alignment with the teaching of science of mind. Dr. Holmes, who gave us this great, wonderful, and beautiful teaching, stated in the Science of Mind textbook, page 7, instinctive life waits upon man's discovery of the natural laws and his discovery of himself and his relationship to the great whole, end of quote. Hence, the title of my presentation, How Science of Mine Has Helped Me to Become a Father. I must tell you, I am an introvert. <laughs> May seem strange, but, and I do not consider myself to be an orator. So, you know, being up here is stepping out of my comfort zone. Correction. Being up here is really wheeling out of my comfort zone. <laughs> Wheel and come again. <laughs> but if one is to know and better understand the importance of father and fatherhood, he or she, yes, she, must transcend beyond his or her comfort zone. In fact, Dr. Holmes, in this thing called you, states, and I quote, everything must find fulfillment or perish. Create or perish is the eternal mandate of nature. End of quote. I lost my mother to the gun when I was eight years of age. 
the fatal bullet came from my father's gun. And the last conversation I recalled with my dad was over the phone after the incident, which happened in the United States of America. His words were, pray for me, as I am no mother and father, end of quote. And even though I prayed for him, he did not come through for my four angels. I like to refer to my sisters as my angels. They are very precious to me. As someone who was born, raised, and still reside in one of Jamaica's so-called volatile constituency, my understanding of who I am and my sense of identity in society started at the age of 13, when wisdom entered my body by way of a bullet. See? That point was my spiritual birth, being in one with creator, understanding fully who I am, not only as a human being, but a spirit manifest in Christ. You know, and I must say that when I say far um, volatile community, it's a false condition. And yes, I am calling it what it is, a false condition. This recognition has empowered me to develop a deep caring for the human condition. Dr. Ohm states, this teaching, science of mind, will change your thinking. Therefore, it will change your life. I, and not only I, but everyone in here today, is a living testament to Dr. Zoom's statement. Amen. Burning with passion, which derive from a better understanding of who I am, and being fully aware of my role and responsibility within the Jamaican society, spirit led me to become a voice of reasoning within, you know, many so-called violent communities. And you know what? I must mention the guidance Reverend John provides in all of this. <laughs> at times when I would call him here at the temple or on his mobile, he would quip, I know you, you know, it's something you want. <laughs> church to tell the truth because I could not stand here and tell a lie. Most of the time he's correct. <laughs> it was indeed something I was seeking. Either his guidance in dealing with a matter for him to place me on the prayer list or to perform some other task for me. Reverend John is very supportive of my holistic development and I must thank him for his guidance, mentorship, and for being a father figure. In true Miss Lou parlance, thank you, Reverend John. <laughs> As a justice of the peace, my nephew, nieces, and grandnieces are referred to as JPs in training. <laughs> yes. They are known to the Kingston chapter of the Lay Magistrates Association as most of the outreach activities they are present rendering some form of assistance. Be it in the painting of a police station, a shelter, or helping out at a health fair. I made it very clear to them the importance of giving back to society and how such activities help them to become critical thinkers and problem solvers. It is very important that adults' actions demonstrate to tomorrow's leaders how they are to positively behave and overcome their challenges. When I wrote this speech, I was not aware that my grandniece Genesia, who gave me that hug, would be on the podium today. And I wrote that 
you know, like I, she's an introvert. <laughs> and I'm really here to help her to step out of, you know, her comfort zone. But the demonstration that she put earlier on on the podium here demonstrate otherwise. So she's allowing spirit to guide her. My little J. <laughs> you know, I was really doing this for you, but you're leading the way. Namaste. And as a result, you know, it is very important that we provide our young people with the tools to liberate them from bondage of fear. And the science of mind teaching is most ideal in doing this. In fact, Dr. Holmes states, to suppose the creative intelligence of the world would create man in bondage and leave him bound would be to dishonor that creative power, which we call God. Thus, it is very important that you know, we love our children, no matter what. Give them love in abundance. Love can't too much. Can't too much. You know. Always create a nurturing environment filled with love, peace, happiness, etc. for them. At times when it would appear as if they are falling out of line, correct them with love, not with anger project from within. Oftentimes, you know, some of us within the society refers to our children as bad or good for nothing whenever they are so-called given trouble. In fact, this is not so. What are unfolding are growth opportunities and avenue for us to bond with them to better understand them and to help them to become more aware of the creativity flowing through them. The Science of Mind text teaches, and I quote, no mistakes have been made. None are being made, and none can be made. End of quote. What is actually happening are learning opportunities as it is not what happens to us that matters, it is the reaction to it. In Jamaica, we say, you lick him down in bunks right back. What a hard man be dead. <laughs> Problems, challenges are there for you to enjoy. Use them as learning opportunities, and as we say, for your holistic development. Throughout the world, fathers, they like to reward their children. Wrong or right? All right. So I'm going to give you a little story. A father of five children who came home with a toy, you know, he summoned his children and asked which one of them should be given the present. So you know it's five of them, but it's only one present. So a little process of el elimination needs to take place. So he said, who is the most obedient one here? Who never talks back to mom and does everything that mom says to do? There was a few seconds of silence. And then all the children said in one accord, you play with it, dad. <laughs> It would be nice to know the reaction of the father to his five children. <laughs> There's another story I want to share as well. The children begged for a hamster, and after the usual fervent vows that they alone would care for it, they got one. You know, children can be very convincing when they want something. They name it Danny. 
D A N N Y. Two months later, when mom found herself responsible for cleaning and feeding the creature, she located, she located a prospective new home for Danny. The children took the news of Danny's imminent departure quite well. Though one of them remarked, he's been around here a long time. We'll miss him. <laughs> yes, mom replied, but he's too much work for one person. And since I am that one person, I say he goes. Another child offered, well, Maybe if he wouldn't eat so much and wouldn't be so messy, we could keep him. <laughs> but mom was firm. It's time to take Danny, Danny to his new home. She insisted. Go and get his cage. With one voice and in tearful outrage, the children shouted, Danny, we thought you said daddy. <laughs> that us fathers has to go through, eh? <laughs> yes. But bless those little kids. In order for us to realize a world of peace, goodwill, uprightness, and harmony, we must produce cohesive, strong, and loving families. Father Patrick Payton, an Irish Catholic priest, who is credited with the famous quote, the family that prays together stay together, end of quote, strongly supports the idea of designated family bonding time. One of the many tools which keep my family together is our fortnightly meetings. The Bible readings and the agendas are decided by the children. They have equal say as any other adult and are permitted to raise concern issues and to recommend solutions as well. One of my nephew is the treasurer. Very important position. <laughs> and though my sisters, nephews and nieces are residing in Canada, and the United States, they participate via WhatsApp and Skype. Out of these meetings, we develop a family pledge, and I would like to share this pledge with you. I would like for us to say it four times. So let me tell you this pledge. I pledge to love, support, and care for my family in all ways that are pleasing unto God. So we're going to say it together, loud. I pledge to love, support, and care for my family in all ways that are pleasing unto God. With a little off voice, I pledge to love, support, and care for my family in all ways that are pleasing unto God. With a whisper, I pledge to love, support, and care for my family in all ways that are pleasing unto God. Just put your right hand upon your heart and whisper to yourself. Thank you. The importance of a cohesive family cannot be overstated. And to further demonstrate this, I share another story. Full of story? <laughs> like Miss Lua Marsran. <laughs> a father being very old and weak while eating dropped food on his shirt and trousers. Others diners watched him in disgust while his son was calm. After he finished eating, his son, who was not at all embarrassed, quietly took him to the washroom 
wiped the food particles, removed the stains, combed his hair, and fitted his spectacles firmly. When they came out, the entire restaurant was watching them in dead silence. Not able to grasp how someone could embarrass themselves publicly like that. The son settled the bill and started walking out with his father. At that time, an old man amongst the diners called out to the son and asked him, don't you think you have left something behind? The son replied, no sir, I have not. The old man retorted, yes you have. You left a lesson for every son and hope for every father. The restaurant went silent. Church, on this day where we recognize and love the fathers of this world, I would like to take the opportunity to thank my four angels, my four sisters who fathered me. Sophia, sitting right there, please stand. Please stand. Thank you very much for the wonderful job that you have done and you are continue to do. Thank you. I would also like to thank each and everyone who have allowed me to be a father to them as well. Thank you very much. Church, thank Jamaica, thank the globe, and we thank Spirit who is forever leading and guiding us. Namaste. Oh.